conferences in an era where all the paths ahead seems bleak and discouraging carries a lot of weight. I'm very sad that one of the panelists, Mr. Mohsen Jobet Dawar, head of Foreign Affairs Committee of Pakistan Parliament, and one of the leaders of the PTM, Pashtun Ta'afuz movement, movement, a democratic and non-violent movement of Pakistan's Pashtuns, who are not allowed by the establishment to come and join us here in Dushanbe. However, I'm glad that I have Ambassador Ronald Newman, President of American Academy of Diplomacy and a great friend of Afghanistan, and Sayyara Dashti, the widow of my great friend and journalist, Fahim Dashti, as well as Mohsen and Dawar, online. In this panel, I would like to ask the panelists how we could create an inclusive government, make the Taliban to respect the fundamental human rights of all Afghans, in particular the women's rights, and bring a sustainable peace in Afghanistan and our international and regional partners can work and provide. I expect uh, from all the distinguished panelists uh, to give a five minute opening uh, and then we go to the participant for the question and answer. First, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Dawar to give us his comment from Pakistan on the future of the AFPAC relationship, the establishment of the establishment of Pakistan policies and behavior toward Afghanistan and the region, and the future of PTM for Pakistan and its impact on Afghanistan. Mr. Dawar, the floor is yours. Mr. Dawar, your mic is mute. I think uh, maybe uh, we can we can start with the uh, ambassador Newman uh, with his remarks. Opening remarks, please, ambassador. Thank you. For this conference. How are we working on this mic, by the way? Are we okay? Okay. I will, I will try to help. Uh, I warned Dawood Muradian when he asked me to do this that you might not like all my views. Uh, we'll have to see. First of all, I want to stress I am not in the U.S. government anymore. I have not been in the U.S. government for 15 years, and I speak only for myself. And I think a great deal of what I have to say has actually already been said by other people and other panels. I will tell you that my short-term view is very black. Long-term, I see some possible bits of light. In the short term, I do not see the Taliban sharing power. They did not agree to share power during a year of negotiation when we were bombing them and killing them as fast as we can. And I do not see any influence which is going to bring them to that sharing of power soon. And I, I don't like that, but I do not see any influence that is going to change that in the short term. I think it is very important for me to reflect on the position of the U.S., although I am not in government. The U.S. is not going to go back into Afghanistan unilaterally. It has limited influence. I think it is important to understand this, however much one dislikes it, because I hear so many of my Afghan friends talking about how 
they can have an international and particularly the U.S. role in creating an inclusive government. That there are some glimmers of hope. And I know people would like to be able to do something now. I was thinking about this last night, and I remembered something that my father told me. My father, as many of you know, was a U.S. ambassador to Afghanistan, but long before he was a U.S. ambassador, he was an, Afghan, an, an Austrian prisoner of the Nazis who spent a year in concentration camp. And he told me once that the people who survived best in concentration camp were the people who did not expect to be released soon. Because the people who thought they could be released soon, for every day they were not released, there was a new agony. And in the end, they did not survive. The people who accepted that they might be there for a long time, and therefore had their vision out further, were the ones who survived. And I think there is some of that also here, because this is going to be a long-term situation. The real pressure on the Taliban, I think, will come from the fact that they are not governing well, that the Afghan people are not receiving what they not only deserve, but what they want in health, in education, in culture, uh, in inclusion. And these, all these things are bringing Afghan pressures on the Taliban. I don't know how they will react to that, but I think those pressures will build. I do think that because of those pressures, there will probably, or at least perhaps I should say I hope, come opportunities for engagement and change further on. I do think it would be useful for Afghans to talk among themselves, not to the foreigners, about what they could accept if there is an opportunity for real engagement with the Taliban. I don't know if that opportunity will come, but what I hear now are the... Uh. ارا اکنون که اینا با عنوان یک زن و با عنوان یک همسر و با عنوان یک مادر از رنجی که بازگشت طالبان بر اینا آورد و بر ازاران و میلیون ها زن دیگه افغان آورد است برای ما حکایت بکنن و در رابطه و چشمانداز آینده اینا چه فکر میکنن ما یک در خدمت شما سفر بشنیم به نام خداوند خانم شهید اول سر از هم از آقای مرولیان جهان سپاس بابرد کنفرانس هم بود واقعا سخت است در ما خیلی مشکل است که ما در این باره گفتیم اما بنام آیندگی از فامیل های شهده که واقعا خانمای شان ناناور خانه خود است می خواهیم به نکتر اشاره کنم اولی که جهان ایس توجه تا فعلا به فامیل های شهده البته شهده بی سال پیزه شهر می گم نکردن نه دولت سابق و نه جهان بسیار مشکلات هم می بینند به خصوص افغانستان که بلکل متفاوت تر است یک خانمی که بخواه اولاد خود درس و درس روان کنه و خودشان هم زمان کار بکنه ای برش آسان نیست و حسنی برش معیا نمیشن بزدهیش از یعنی یک خانم از پاکستان و افغانستان می ره به نام هنا ربانی و خیلی استقبال گرم میشه از طرف طالبا اما هر زمان خانمایی که سرپرست ندارن حق اجازه کارم ندارن حق حتی بیرون برآمدن ندارن و دلیل چی به دلیل از که تو محرم ندارن وقتی که طالبا از او خانم حمایت میکنن و پیشانی باز و خیلی خوشی میرن پذیرایی میکنن 
هفتوز در حال زن ما زن افغان که واقعا در داور است که اون نه کار کرده بتانه و نه اولاد خدا به مکتب روان کرده بتانه و نه دختر خدا آینده شدیده بتانه فکر می کنم که خواهش ما امی است که واقعا توجه ده ای باره صورت بگیره توجه کنن دنیا به ای فعالیت های داشتیم ما هم اگه چی در داخل افغانستان بود چی در بیرون افغانستان بود اما نادیده نگیریم که این مقامتی که خانوما فعلا جوریان داره تظاهرات میشه در خود افغانستان در بیرون از افغانستان این مقامت سرچشمه میگیره به او امو جوانایی که در قلعه های بلند اون دو کش فعلا هستند و مبارزه میکنند ما یکی دیگر دیده قوت میگیریم امو قسم که ما برادرای خود میبینیم که در هستند در جواهات جنگ ما میخیزیم صدای بلند میکنیم همو قسم اونا ما را دیده خواهش است که زن و مرد همیشه یک جای مقامت دارند همگی یک جای مقامت میکنیم این را جدا نسازه چون مقامت قسمی که قهرمان ملی گفتن که باشن نباشن مقامت ادامه داره واقعا که مقامت ادامه داره مقامت در فرد فرد هر کدام ما هست از کودک گرفته تا بزرگ تا پیر تا همه جهان سپاس همه زر همه دید زن افغانستان متاسفانه در چهار ده جنگ گذشته چی به عنوان زن چی به عنوان همسر چی به عنوان مادر بسیاری از قربانی های بزرگ را متحمل شدن چون متاسفانه مردا جنگ میکردن و بار سختی ها و مشکلات و رنج و شکنجه را زنان در خانه های خود تجربه میکردن بسیار زیاد تشکر So much, um, uh, thank you so much for the um, Afghan Institute of Strategic Studies for um, inviting me and um, um, I wish I could have been uh, there but you know as you said that I was stopped uh, at the airport you know when I was leaving for uh, this conference um, which it itself shows uh, the intent of uh, uh, the people ruling here uh, that how uh, they think about uh, what's their intent about the peace in Afghanistan. Uh, well, it's again, um, it's an honor to address the 10th uh, Herat Security uh, Dialogue. And this dialogue is critical to finding durable solutions for the Afghan tragedy. And I believe that uh, in the backdrop of an ill-planned and poorly negotiated withdrawal, a tragedy has befallen um, the Afghan people. Um, I would like to uh, start uh, from um, the point uh, from where this chaos uh, started. And um, in saying that I have no doubt uh, that the Western powers uh, uh, withdrawal without any clear route map uh, for an inclusive political system uh, led the foundation for the current crisis in Afghanistan. And I firmly believe that the Doha deal uh, kept the Afghan government out of the process of the talks and the Americans effectively handed over uh, Afghanistan to uh, Taliban without uh, the explicit uh, consent um, of uh, the Afghan government and the people of Afghanistan. And the Doha agreement between the United States and the Taliban was the main reason for the breakdown of the democracy um, and, uh, you know, um, this agreement uh, uh, between the U.S. and the Taliban has uh, left the country in a crisis and in a way legitimized uh, Taliban uh, holding uh, Afghanistan and its public uh, hostage. And um, an overwhelming sense of uh, betrayal is, uh, is evident, you know, while Taliban paid lip services 
to an inclusive political and economic system. Um, the Western powers aware of uh, the fate that uh, awaited the Afghan people willfully uh, abandoned them. Uh, despite assurances, uh, we are witnessing the, the progressive exclusion of women and girls from the public sphere and uh, their institutionalized and systematic um, um, oppression. Um, the Taliban have, um, they have stonewalled every effort to engender an inclusive representative government and political system uh, that ensures equal rights uh, for all, especially for, um, for women. Uh, like this uh, departure of the, uh, uh, after the departure of the Western uh, forces, the Taliban have shown uh, no interest in engaging the Afghans politically and appear to be um, and appear to want to continue uh, to rule by force. And this is the only thing uh, which they know. Um, it is therefore inherently, um, uh, it is the, uh, their, uh, their inherently inclusive uh, uh, nature uh, is, you know, it, it precludes the hope of enduring peace uh, through an inclusive political system. Um, without the political consensus, it is certain that the infighting of the various uh, factions of the Taliban will lead to even more chaos in Afghanistan and, you know, even more uh, tragedies for the people um, of Afghanistan. And uh, for the regional powers uh, in, you know, in the surrounding of Afghanistan, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to remind that the, uh, that the regional powers uh, um, you know, uh, will definitely be affected by the presence of uh, uh, some, you know, uh, international terrorist networks like Al Qaeda and uh, um, uh, ISS. Uh, and it is, you know, it should be a, a cause of concern for China, Russia, and all the, uh, especially the, the, the regional countries. And um, in the context of uh, uh, of Taliban, you know, in the context of Pakistan, you know, like, like as I said, the said that I was stopped. Uh, um, from attending this um, uh, this conference, uh, uh, one of the reasons is because Pakistan has always, you know, watched uh, and looked into the uh, issue of Afghanistan with their own presence, uh, like the, the, the and Taliban still, uh, and there were, you know, the proxies of uh, Pakistan intelligence agencies, uh, although uh, um, uh, I believe that I have said it uh, time and again that. Uh, it's going to backfire for them also, and they will definitely have to um, to face the impact of whatever they have done uh, uh, in Afghanistan. And uh, because we are still, you know, uh, witnessing uh, the shuras and the networks and the Haqqanis and the uh, Quetta and the Peshawar shuras and everything, you know, uh, these networks still uh, remain um, uh, intact. Uh, 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 one thing which I would also like to uh, highlight is, you know, um, uh, in this uh, um, 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 humanitarian crisis, the one, you know, the resilience of Afghan people, especially the uh, the Afghan women, you know, uh, the protests uh, by Afghan women after the Taliban's uh, uh, takeover, uh, it needs to be supported. The resilience, the courage, and the bravery of Afghan uh, women, it needs to be highlighted, um, and the ban on girls' education uh, need to be spoken out uh, about and highlight more loud uh, in all the available um, uh, global forum, uh, forums. Um, Thank you, for Mr. the future and for the way forward, I will to conclude it with the, with the way forward, is that um, um, the that Afghan needs to organize and center their uh, political uh, resistance. One thing is very much uh, uh, clear that um, Taliban lacks effective capacity. Um, you know, um, they lack the capacity to uh, govern a system. They are only uh, trained to destroy. They are never trained uh, to build a system. Now, uh, in such kind of situation, uh, while they refuse to craft an, a, a political system and accord a general political space to all the political stakeholders, uh, their collapse is imminent. I would say their collapse is imminent. Uh, but, you know, then it uh, falls upon the various political uh, factions and the society and different groups uh, 
uh, to effectively organize them um, uh, themselves. Uh, the regional powers should not lean their support, uh, you know, um, to Taliban. In fact, uh, you know, they should uh, uh, support uh, to whatever, you know, alternative uh, is uh, um, coming against uh, it. And um, um, I am a bit disconnected from this discussion because sitting far away, I just uh, a, a couple, a half an hour again ago, I joined this discussion. But I heard one of the uh, a few comments uh, that uh, it was talking about uh, that uh, what uh, what's the alternative? You know, it, uh, and it was said that it's becoming a bit hard to find an alternative. What I would suggest that if we if we start uh, if we start from where we have left, um, then I think uh, uh, we can uh, come on some sort of uh, uh, conclusion. Um, uh, and I agree that it is a bit difficult to uh, to organize all the uh, there are too many you know dissenting voices against this current regime. It is a bit hard to unite them in a single platform. But I think uh, thank you. one of uh, the way forward can be that we should start from where we have left. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Lower. Afghan society, Afghan civil society, media, academia, Afghan diaspora for the way forward and how can the international community and the regional countries can help us uh, to, to, to build something sustainable and stable for Afghanistan uh, while you seem a little bit pessimistic for the short term but give us, uh, give us the, the, the perspective uh, for the maybe five, ten years. You know, I, I have a lot of trouble figuring out tomorrow. And you want a perspective for five or ten years. <coughs> I, can't, I can't do it. I, I will, one reflection. There is, two, there is a tension between the pressures that will come in Afghanistan because of dissatisfaction and the fact that people do not want to go back to violence. And there, there will be, a I don't know where the balance will come. That will have a great deal to do with how events unfold. I, I think it would be Im almost improper for a foreigner to try to lecture Afghans and civil society on what their goal ought to be. I can suggest a couple of questions that need to be among the questions that Afghans ask themselves, but only you can decide if those are legitimate questions. We have used repeatedly the word inclusion in these two days. Nobody has defined it. And there's a very good reason for that, because people, in fact, would have different definitions. Does inclusion mean the Taliban give a few minister positions to Tajiks and Uzbeks and they have no power? Probably not, but that could be inclusion. Does inclusion mean full equality in a democratic system? But there is a question of realism, how far can it get? It's among the pressures that will be on the Taliban. Uh, there's one other tension we have not talked about and that is the tension, of, you know, we talked about a little, and, and uh, fortunately Charge Decker uh, talked with clarity about some of the things the U.S. is doing, which, some of which put pressure on the Taliban. The U.S. and the international community do give a lot of humanitarian assistance as they should. But the, fa the more humanitarian assistance you give, the less the pressure on the Taliban from inside Afghanistan. If you cut off humanitarian assistance, people die. There's, no, there's not going to be any perfect answer. 
but I think it would be worth people talking among themselves because this is a question that Afghans outside can, inside can address to the international community. Where do you think the balance should be between assistance and pressure? Because the more assistance you give, the more you do lower the pressure on the Taliban. So, should it be only food? Should it be education, paying salaries? Should it be health care? I mean, those are all good things. There are good arguments for doing them. But they also reduce the popular pressure inside Afghanistan on the Taliban. So these are only a couple of questions which I think I simply suggest they could be discussed more and it would be good if there were more unified answers, if there can be. But I don't think it's for the foreigner to tell you how to work your life. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, Mr. Uh, on both sides of the border, uh, both in Afghanistan and Pakistan, you have, uh, we only have four minutes left for, in, uh, for this session. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you uh, so much. Well, we have been, you know, uh, very critical about uh, the role of all the stakeholders, you know, uh, uh, who are a part of this uh, disaster. We have, you know, criticized the role of uh, uh, Pakistan uh, very loudly, you know, uh, uh, from, from the very past. And we have, you know, uh, more than that, we have criticized the role of the uh, U.S., you know, the way they have withdrawn from, um, uh, from Afghanistan. And apart from that, uh, uh, we have, you know, engaged the public and uh, we have, you know, identified the threats which we're going to... Uh, uh, face, you know, in the future, you know, because Afghanistan uh, has already been given to a terrorist organization. But the same threat lies on this side of the Durand also. And um, uh, a few uh, months ago, uh, they have initiated a talk with, um, uh, with the TTP. And we considered it uh, as, uh, uh, we considered it as a plot uh, to, you know, install Taliban in the entire uh, Pashtun belt. Um, in this side of the uh, of the Durand, but through mass resistance and to public uprising, you know um, uh, that has been you know uh, um, that 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 things uh, that uh, project I would call it a project. It went um, uh, it uh, uh, went to the back step. So for a political force and for a political party and for a political worker, mass mobilization. Uh, is uh, uh, the only way out, and that's how you know uh, we can uh, uh, we can force, we can mobilize, uh, and we can you know uh, pressurize uh, and we can contain uh, that uh, threat. And across the the Duran, I have said in my talk also that the political forces need uh, to uh, unite, and this is the only uh, way out. We have seen Afghan women, you know, they have been um, uh, they have been protesting very bravely, you know, in such kind of uh, an oppressive environment. If, uh, if, uh, uh, if, you know, if everybody joins them, uh, if the same, uh, if the same idea, if, if the same um, modus operandi is replicated um, from all, you know, um, segments, I think then, then, then they can make, uh, uh, if, if all the political forces follow that path, then I think we can make a difference. Thank you so much, Mr. Dawar. Uh, I'm under pressure from the organizers to, to finish this session as soon as, as fast as I can. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you so much, Mr. Dawar. Uh,